What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here. And in this video, we're going to be discussing my pros and cons with the Samsung Galaxy A11. So this is the Samsung Galaxy A11. This phone was recently launched and is the successor to last year's Samsung Galaxy A10. And so far, I've been very happy with this phone. But I did create a list of my five favorite things and five least favorite things with the device. And I certainly think you'll find this information to be helpful and hopefully it'll give you a better idea of if this phone is a good fit for you. So starting off with the pros with this device. And number one is the processor. So the Samsung Galaxy A11 features the Qualcomm Snapdragon 450. Now typically, I have not been too big of a fan of the 450, but that's because other manufacturers have been pairing up that processor with much more expensive devices. Now the Samsung Galaxy A11 is being offered at around $170, and that's a really good price, but I've seen this same processor that's in this phone be featured in other phones like the LG Stylo 5, which was launched last year, and that phone retailed for $299. Now, of course, that device has received quite a few discounts since it did originally launch, but my point is, is that with the Galaxy A11, we're getting a processor here that typically comes with more expensive phones. So the ratio of the price to what you're getting for that price really is good when you consider that this phone does have the Qualcomm Snapdragon 450. So if you're someone that does basic tasks on their smartphone, such as browsing the web, doing some casual social media usage, doing phone calls and text messages, and taking photos and videos, then certainly the Snapdragon 450 will be adequate with this device. My second favorite thing about the Samsung Galaxy A11 is that this phone features a very large display. Now I remember it wasn't too long ago when you had to buy an expensive higher end device to get a large display. Typically the lower end budget phones had smaller displays, but that simply is no longer the case. And with the Samsung Galaxy A11, we're actually getting a very large display here on the phone. So with the device, we're getting a 6.4 inch display. So that's quite large. We're also getting a hole punch for the front facing camera here, and I like that as well. And if you think about it, as time has gone on, people's needs have changed quite a bit when it comes to smartphones. Now, more than ever, people are using their phones to watch video content, go on apps like TikTok and Instagram, where having a big display certainly does make your experience of using those services much better. So that's why in 2020, it is important to get a device with a large display. Now, my third favorite thing about this phone is the cameras, and specifically that we're getting an ultra wide angle camera with the device. Now the Galaxy A10, which like I mentioned a second ago, is the predecessor to this phone. That phone did not feature an ultra wide camera, but we are getting it here with the A11. So let me show you exactly the benefits of having an ultra wide camera. So here's how things look with the standard camera. Now I'm gonna switch over to the ultra wide camera and you can see how much more content fits into the frame here. So that's really impressive. It's really good to see that we're able to take photos that look like this. And certainly if you're someone that does a lot of traveling, maybe you take a lot of group photos, for example, then having an ultra wide camera will make a big difference. So I'm glad we do have it here on the phone. It's certainly not a gimmick, that's for sure. So good job Samsung with finding a way to include an ultra wide camera with the A11. Coming in at number four is USB-C on the device. I'm really glad that we are getting USB-C here with the phone. Now, I personally feel like USB-C should have taken over years ago, but with some of these lower end devices, smartphone manufacturers have really been taking their time to include USB-C, and I'm glad that the A11 does indeed have it because I've been really building out my collection of USB-C cables, and I'm so ready for the day that micro USB smartphones no longer exist. And coming in at number five is the build quality of the Samsung Galaxy A11. So this material on the back of the phone, which is plastic by the way, is actually really cool. It reminds me a lot of the material that comes with the iPhone 5C. 
Now, I know that that phone came out a long time ago, about five years ago, but it still is a really cool looking material here. And it is also very unique, especially compared to many of the A11's competitors. So I'm very happy with it. I think it's a good looking material. Certainly is decently durable. It's not gonna crack like glass would. And I like it a lot. Now I've also seen this phone in both red and blue in other videos online. And it looks really good in those colors as well. But if you wanna see all the various colors that the Samsung Galaxy A11 is available in, then take a look at the link in the video description. But I'm a really big fan of the materials that the A11 is made out of. Another thing that I wanna to mention too is that this phone feels very solid. So it's a very well-built, well-constructed device, which is something that's not too common with lower end phones. Another cool benefit with the phone too that I forgot to include in the top five, so it'll be kind of a bonus number six, is that we do get a fingerprint sensor with the phone. So not only do we get a quick fingerprint sensor with the device, but we also get face unlock as well. Now those are the pros for the Samsung Galaxy A11. Let's now go over the cons of the device, with number one being that we're only getting two gigabytes of RAM with the phone. Now thankfully, I'm glad that we get a good processor with the Snapdragon 450, but I definitely would have liked to see three gigs of RAM instead of two here with the phone. I mean, seriously, it's 2020. At this point, no phone should have two gigabytes of RAM. Now, like I mentioned, the fact that they did pair up two gigs of RAM with a decent processor will give you good performance with the phone, especially for the amount of money that you are paying. But if we would have had three gigs of RAM, then this phone definitely would have really stood out and it would have taken things to the next level here. Coming in at number two is the display. Now, I do like the display here on the device, even though it is a lower end TFT display from Samsung. But one of the downsides with it is that in this corner on the upper left here, you can kind of see a little bit of discoloration around the front facing camera. So that's totally acceptable considering that this probably is a lower end display. But keep in mind that this display itself does certainly have its drawbacks. You're not getting the best viewing angles on here. You're not getting the best colors either but again for a phone in this price range it is adequate but it is something that certainly could be better number three is wireless charging there's no wireless charging with this phone now you're probably not surprised by that but that is something that would be cool to see in a phone in this price range maybe something that samsung could have included here that really would have made this phone stand out from its competitors but there is no wireless charging and the only way to charge this phone is via the USB-C port. Now number four is no NFC. Now that certainly is something that I think is a bit disappointing considering that Samsung really does push Samsung Pay quite a bit. And I feel like the cost of putting NFC in this phone would be paid for by more people using Samsung Pay. Different software services like that can make companies like Samsung and competitors like Apple a lot of money. And that's typically why they really try to promote those various software services. But to use that service, you do need additional hardware and you need NFC. So since there is no NFC with the Samsung Galaxy A11, you cannot use Samsung Pay with the phone. And finally, for my last con with the device, I'm not a big fan of the bottom bezel on here. So you can see that the bottom bezel is quite large. It's kind of a thicker bottom bezel. And I understand that for a phone in this price range, you're gonna have to accept that there are gonna be some compromises here with the design, but I do feel like that bottom bezel is a bit on the thicker side. But in general, I still do like the Samsung Galaxy A11 quite a bit. So certainly I do recommend it if you can snag this device for a good price. Now to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone, take a look at the link in the video description. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to sub to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. But this is Kevin here. This is the Samsung Galaxy A11 Pros and Cons, and I will see you in the next video.